90%, this is a Ross statistic, 90, 95% of the boats in the marinas of the world are made of polyester, vinyl polyester resin, right? Vinyl polyester, polyester resin, anything with polyester in the title, pretty much, um, is, go, is, is one type of liquid catalyst cured hardening substance. Epoxy is a different substance. At its core, the entire chemical construction of the thing is totally different, right? That's the, that's the pretense by which we need to understand um, polyester versus epoxy. We have a situation where the world has been presented with this idea that epoxy now re will repair anything and everything. That is true. What we must be very aware of is that once we have used an epoxy product, we cannot then reapply polyester products on top of. Why not? Because the epoxy chemical compounds can etch prime, chemically bond themselves to polyester. So including, the, as well as our mechanical abrasion that we're gonna do before we try to adhere these two things together, sanding it with rough sandpaper, the epoxy is able to etch itself into the polyester. Whereas, once we've used an epoxy product, the polyester cannot etch its way back into. So we only ever end up with a mechanical bond and not a chemical bond. Do we know what Evadure is? Evadure is an international wood hardening product. It's a liquid um, one coat resin that you paint into. It's an epoxy based product. And then what happens over the top, we put some polyester. The two things are never bonding properly. This is the kind of care that we need to exercise on board when we go around with polyester products. Flow coat, you know what flow coat is? Flow, the inside of the bilges of your boat is painted with flow coat. Flow coat is polyester gel coat. Yeah? Um, it's, and it's sold as a two pack product. You, you clean your bilges thoroughly, you scrub it all with degreaser, and then you paint it with, with flow coat. That's what um, the rep in the, in the paint shop or, or the supplier has told you, yeah? Um, whereabouts has any epoxy repairs taken place in your 30, 40 year old boat? Mm. Mm. It's worth paying the extra money and going to the epoxy product when you have that situation, when you don't know what has occurred in the build of your boat. It also quite, quite often be that you've got epoxy in there from source. There are, I say 95% of the boats out there are, are five, uh, polyester. There's epoxy carbons, there's epoxy Kevlars, there's epoxy all sorts of things out there as well. There's polyester carbon, there's polyester Kevlars. It's just the resin that we use. Right, little known fact, if I can find my tiny sample. Chop strand mat, woven mat. What keeps chops, this is woven, so therefore its dry structure before we use it is taken care of. It's woven cloth as we understand cloth to be. This is sewn double, double diagonal, all right, or sewn diagonal. Um, it's sewn together so the fibers don't fall apart. What keeps this together? Just the resin. What resin? No, I'm talking about in its state as it is at the moment prior to putting any... Just fr friction. No, it's mm -hmm. glass, it's slidey as. It's got polyester glue on it. Mm. Polyester vinyl type resin glue on chop strand mat. You cannot use chop strand mat with epoxy to its full bond strength mm. because the polyester glues in here will never break down. You can use it and get away with it because most of the time we're not engineers and we're not using it to within an inch of its life. In fact, we tend to put 25 layers on when we need to, all right? And we get away with using epoxy on chop strand mat. Chop strand mat, never ever use epoxy product. Only ever use polyester resin because the polyester resin then activates and breaks down that glue that's holding these fibers together. You could tell a lot of people with cars that, couldn't you? 
Yeah. Who, well, no, because if they use polyester, so if you buy a car repair kit, yeah. it's entirely polyester tech. Right, okay. It doesn't right, use okay. any epoxy technology. And this is what I mean. We've been sold this idea that epoxy is the be all and end all for everything. It is with care. Yeah. Um, right, different cloths for different purposes is the question. You've got um, chop strand mat comes in different weights. As, as to all of these mats, mm -hmm. they all come in different weights. Um, there are very standard stuff. You'll find it hard until you get to specialist suppliers to find anything other than a uh, half mil chop strand or um, one, mil, um, one mil double diagonal or um, one half mil woven, woven cloth. They're the standard sizes. So you'll find it hard to find anything different than that. The engineer, the boat, the, the boat builder, the naval architect will have specified a laminate, finished laminate thickness, right? The, the, the best way I can guide you with what do I want to achieve with my repair is what's the final constructed thickness that you want to achieve for that repair. I don't have the answer to that question. I have no idea where you're putting the repair, right? Mm -hmm. But that's the, how a boat builder will decide on how many layers of cloth they want to put into it is how much final strength do you want out of this and there's there's you know engineering um, equations for the finished constructual strength using double diagonal woven or, or chop strand right for us every day of the week this guy here with polyester resin we're only going to use polyester resin on chop strand because of the glues inside you're with our consolidation rollers you're going to get this to pretty much any shape you ever conceive of and can imagine. Round corners, round different shapes, round the knife edge of a keel, you're gonna be able to fold it over. Even if there's a couple of strands stick out, it will go there, right? Okay. Excuse me. These guys will only bend to certain radius. And that's another bit that you need to figure out the specifications of what's the radius, the tightest radius that I can go to. And once you get, start going into multi-dimensional corners, inside outside round type corners you will notice that if you use this cloth in particular and um, the woven cloth it will start to actually no matter how much you try to consolidate it with your consolidation roller it'll try to form back to its shape and you'll be there forever literally until the glue starts going hard and it gives you a really good clue you've used the wrong mat in the wrong job um, generally used for flat repairs and seams in things like, you could lay one layer of that over a bonded glued um, butt joint in wood, where you didn't care what it looked like in the end, and put a, a thickness like that, a width like that over the top, and that on a flat piece of board will give you stronger, with the right glue powders in there, than the original wood, mm. all right? Um, the next halfway house between um, chop strand is this double diagonal. Can you see that it's double diagonal, literally the construction is double diagonal. Mm -hmm. And I can ch change and, and flex that and the material's moving. It will literally deform to a lot of oh, different okay. shapes. Yeah. All right, so this is like the halfway house between flat mm. surface work or flat air surface work and multi-dimensional work four epoxies yeah hope that answers that question and um, the consolidation roller you will if you've ever done any of this sort of stuff it's like oh this $80 I've been told I need one but can't afford that just for this tiny little job the cons buy one consolidation roller small little consolidation roller you will never regret it the difference in a job between using a chopped off um, paintbrush you chop the bristles right down so you've got something that's stabby and firm. Mm. Yeah, the difference between a consolidation roller finished job and a paintbrush finished job, both for your own feeling and satisfaction of how the job's been laid up and the actual interweaving. When you're mashing fibres together, especially with the chop strand with the consolidation roller, you're actually mashing things together so that the, 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 the layers all tie together nicely. Mm. You don't get that with a bristly brush. 
and mm. a pot of glue. Like, it just doesn't work in the same so way. So that sort of mashes it up together and sort of squeezes it. It just feels, it once, you, the... once you've used a consolidation roller, you, you get the feeling that the job's going well. You'd use a, a, a bristly brush and it's like, oh, it won't go down. It's not staying in the right shape. Mm. 